In this video we are going to do some percent problems where we need to find the whole when we know the part and the percent. And in this video we're going to solve these problems using proportions. You may have seen another video I did where I solved these problems using a formula. So you can do it whichever way you like. I just wanted to show both ways of solving these kind of problems. So let's look at our first example. 18 is 30 percent of what number? So in this case, we know the 30% and we know the 18. But what we have to determine about the 18 is does that re represent the part or the whole in this situation? So let's try to get a picture of what's going on. 18 is 30% of something. 18 comes out to be the answer when I take 30% of something. So maybe, um, maybe there's a sale and something is 30% off so I took 30% of that number and it came out to be 18 bucks where I saved $18. So the number that we're looking for is the whole. We don't know the whole here. Another thing that maybe could help you to identify these kind of things is of means multiply and you're always going to be taking your percent times the whole. Your percent is always going to be multiplied by the whole and we don't know the whole in this case. All right, so we know, let's see, we know the 18 is the part. That's helpful. The whole we don't know. That's our question mark. And we know the 30%. So let's set this up with a proportion. The part over the whole, in this case, is 18 over, we don't know. So I'll put a question mark there. Equals our percent over 100. Our percent is 30%. So that's 30 over 100. Now if you've worked with proportions before, you know a proportion is when a fraction equals a fraction. And to solve a proportion, you can do something called cross multiplication. A shortcut for cross multiplication, which you can use without really knowing what's going on, or why it's working, is to multiply the two numbers that are across from each other, and then divide by the number that's across from the answer that you want to figure out. So in other words, in this case, we would do 18 times 100, and we would get that answer, and then we would divide it by 30, and that will give us the value of the question mark. So let's go ahead and do that. 18 times 100 is 1,800, divided by 30. So 3 goes into 18 six times, and then one of these zeros will cancel out one other of these zeros, and we'll get 60. Let me do that out the long way, just in case that was a little fast. So 30 goes into 180 six times for exactly 180 and then you have this one more zero here that you have to account for. 30 goes into zero zero times. So our answer is 60. Now in order to kind of see what's going on here you'd really have to know a little bit more algebra. The actual concept of cross multiplication you would multiply both these things that are across from each other. So if you if you learn proportions sometime in the future, you're probably not going to see this shortcut. And I have, you know, sometimes shortcuts are good, but sometimes they get us into trouble. So we need to be careful with them and know when to apply them. In general, when you're doing cross multiplication, you're going to multiply both things that are across from each other. So in other words, we take 18 times 100, and that would equal, we have to put an equal sign in there, 30 times the question mark. 30 times question mark. Now if I was getting algebra-like, I would put an x there and put a variable there. And if you're comfortable with variables in algebra, go ahead and put an x there. That's great. And this is 30 times the question mark. Now I'm using parentheses here to mean multiplication. Some of you may not have seen that before, I don't know. But when you have a number and you want to talk about multiplying it, if you put the 18 right next to these parentheses, it means multiplication. It means 18 times 100. So this is 1800 equals 30 times some number. In order to figure out what that number is, you're going to need to divide. How many times does 30 go into 1800? We just did that over here. And that answer was 60. So 60 is the number that we don't know. Let's try another one. And we're going to do all these using proportions. 
Let's try this one. Let's look at a little story problem. In a recent basketball game, a team made 45% of their shots, and they made 27 baskets. How many shots did they take? So we have our percent, which is 45 out of 100. If they made 45% of shots, they would make 45 out of 100. That's what percent means, per 100. So we want to set that equal to the part out of the whole. They made 27 baskets. How many did they shoot? So they made 27 out of how many? That's what we're trying to figure out. We don't know how many, so we don't know the whole number of shots that they took. So we'll put a question mark. Okay, so if we're going to use the shortcut, we're going to multiply the two numbers that are across from each other and divide by this number that's across from the answer that we want to figure out. So in order to figure this out, we need to do 27 times 100 and then take that answer and divide it by 45. 2700 divided by 45. We could do that uh, long division, but let's go ahead for the sake of time and pull out the calculator. If you want to practice your long division, go ahead, pause the video, do the division. 2700 divided by 45 is 60. That one wasn't too bad. So our answer is 60, which means they took 60 shots. Let's see if that answer makes sense. You always want to see if the answer makes sense. They made 27 baskets, and we're saying they shot 60 times, and that gave us 45%. Now, if they would have made 50%, 45% is pretty close to 50%. If they would have made 50% of their baskets and they shot 60 times, how many shots would they have made? Half, right? That would have been 30 that they made. But they only made 45%, which is a little less than 50%. So they made a little fewer than 30. 27 is a good estimate. I feel good about my answer. That answer makes sense. You always want to make sure your answer makes sense. All right, let's look at another example. Maybe try this one using proportions all by yourself. Pause the video. Give it a try. Tom saved $12 on a sweater that was on sale for 20% off. What was the original price of the shirt, the sweater? Same thing. All right, so pause the video. Okay, so we know that he saved $12 out of some whole amount. We don't know. Let's switch to an X. Let's get fancy here and use a variable instead of a question mark. And the percent is 20%, so that's 20 out of 100. So now we do our cross multiplying. The 12 and the 100 are across from each other. So we're going to take 12 times 100, and whatever we get for that answer, we're going to divide it by 20. So 12 times 100 is 1,200 divided by 20. I think we can do that pretty easily. 20 goes into 120 six times, and then we have this zero, so we got to put another zero there. If you wrote it out like this, you'd say, well, I have another zero, so... 60. X equals 60. So that would be 60 bucks that he spent on the shirt or the sweater. Um, I'm just calling those the same thing. Hopefully that's not confusing. So this uh, sweater was $60 and it was 20% off. Let's see, does that make sense that it would be $12? Think about that for a second. Um, you know 10% of 60 would be 6 so 20% would be twice as much. 20% of 60 would just be 12. So that makes sense. That's a good answer. It checks out. Always want to make sure that that makes sense. All right, last one. Let's try doing this one with proportions. In the Dalton School District, 23 teachers will retire in the next three years, which is approximately 8.2% of the total number of teachers in the district. How many teachers work in the Dalton School District? So go ahead and pause that and give that a try and then start the video when you have your answer. Okay, so we know 23 teachers are going to retire, but we don't know the whole number of teachers in the school district. The 23 then is the part of the teachers that are going to retire. And it's the whole that we don't know. So 23 out of how many 
will equal our percent, which is 8.2 out of 100. That's what we're trying to figure out. So we're going to cross multiply the 23 times the 100 and then divide by the 82. 20, or excuse me, 8.2. 23 times 100 divided by 8.2. 23 times 100 is 2300 divided by 8.2. Let's get the calculator for this one. 2300 divided by 8.2 equals. All right, we have this big old... Um, we have this big old number here, lots of decimals. So we need to think about the context of the problem. And the problem is teachers. This is a total number of teachers in the district. So we want to round it to the nearest whole number to represent teachers. Let me write out the first few digits of this. 280.4878. 280.4878. Now, if I'm going to round to the nearest whole number, I need to just look at the number directly to the right and ignore this stuff. I don't care about that. I'm just going to ask myself, does this 4 round this 0 up to a 1? In this case, it doesn't because it needs to be 5 or greater in order to round it up. So if I'm going to round this to the nearest whole number, it's just going to stay right at 280 teachers. Always label your story problem answers with what that number represents, in this case, teachers. And then go back and ask yourself if it makes sense. Let's see, I have 280 total teachers, and it says 8.2% of them are going to retire, and they're saying that's 23 teachers. So let's see, what would be a easy percent that's close to 8.2? That would be 10%. So 10% of 280, just move the decimal over, would be 28. If 10% of the teachers were retiring, it'd be 28 teachers, but it's not, it's less than 10%, so a little less than 28 teachers, 23, that makes sense, that's in the ballpark. I think my answer makes logical sense. Well, hopefully that helps, and you can use this, this proportion really to find the part or the whole or the percent, depending on what numbers that you're given, and there's some other videos that can help you with different types of problems if you'd like to see those.